Today we're going to be taking a nostalgic journey down memory lane and revisiting six men's retro designer fragrances that you can now pick up at a very reasonable price point of around the £20 mark on sites like Amazon and eBay. All six of these iconic vintage legends were once really big hitters in the heyday, but today I'm going to find out how they stack up in today's world. And are they still the showstoppers that they once were? Or have they been condemned to the bargain basement bin forever with the emergence of lots of new old factory trends? We'll be getting into all of that plus more, but whilst I've got you, uh, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you want to see loads more fragrance content like this. And you're more than welcome to join our small but perfectly formed little Mags Frags community. So without further ado, grab yourself a cup of tea or a coffee, make yourself comfortable and let's find out what's made it into today's episode and whether any of these uh, are worth buying in uh, 2024. Welcome to Mags Frags. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to kick things off by starting with the oldest one in today's selection. This is Aramis EDT for Men, which was launched back in 1965. It's a time machine in a bottle, uh, when men smell like men and other colognes smell like, well, Aramis. Um, it was the first prestige fragrance to be widely available in department stores, and to this day it's still sold in over 120 countries worldwide. It's a leather sheeper fragrance that contains prominent notes of leather, oak, moss, amber, aldehydes and civet, so it's uh, a bold and unapologetically masculine fragrance. In the 1960s and beyond, many fragrance brands would include the animalic note of civet, which, which gives off like a, a pungent body odour like aroma, and this was considered to be sexy and attractive to the opposite sex back in the day, uh, but how times have changed. Uh, but this starts out quite fresh, herbaceous and slightly spicy, with the aldehydes combining with several wild floral notes including gardenia, jasmine, artemisia and sage. Uh, but with also that civet note, so straight away, uh, this is like being greeted with a firm handshake by a man that's just finished chopping wood all day and probably hasn't had a shower for a couple of days. There's no avoiding the whiff of ripe, sweaty armpits, uh, but that's exactly what Aramis was aiming for when they created this one. But obviously this is not all about smelling like B.O. and there's also lots to like about the fragrance. As it dries down you get lots of leather, oak, moss and musk that just comes through and it's reminiscent of the smell that you get from the interior of like a vintage sports car. It's a semi-sweet suede like leather uh, which has a mild dusty texture. There's also sandalwood that brings a, co a comforting softness and adds a smooth and creamy accent to the dry down. In terms of the performance, Aramis is like the Energizer Bunny of fragrances. It just keeps going and going, uh, and you could spray this on in a morning, run a marathon, build a house and wrestle a bear, and you'd still have people asking you what you're wearing at the end of the day. This is a, a scent that's not for the faint-hearted though, it's for the man who isn't afraid to make a statement. It's for the gentleman who appreciates a good scotch wearing a thick gold bracelet, enjoys the crackle of a vinyl record, and who can tell the difference between a Windsor knot and a half Windsor knot without googling it. It's one of the most recognised and important fragrances ever created in my opinion. It's an all time classic and one that every fragrance enthusiast or collector should have in his collection. Okay, so next up is Paco Rabanne Pour Homme, uh, which is another fragrance that stood the test of time, much like the Pyramids of Egypt, but thankfully uh, with a much more pleasant aroma. This classic barbershop style scent was first launched in 1973, capturing the essence of the era when bell-bottom jeans and tank tops were the height of fashion and disco and glam rock uh, was king. It's a, a fresh green sheeper fragrance and opens with rosemary, clary sage and Brazilian rosewood, and from the initial spray, it's like literally spraying the colour green. It's herbaceous and aromatic and it gives you a, a scent experience of taking a walk through a pine forest after a heavy downpour of rain. It's a bright, crisp and sharp introduction that's super refreshing and energising, uh, but you also can't fail to recognise that it's somewhat old fashioned smelling and belongs to a, a different era in time. It's a bit like listening to a, a Bay City Rollers song and knowing instantly that it's uh, got a 1970s date stamp running through it. As it settles down, uh, you start to notice the heart of the fragrance, which is a concoction of uh, geranium, lavender and also tonka beans, which just adds a mild hint of floral sweetness, uh, but it remains extremely herbaceous and effervescent uh, for the first couple of hours. 
But as the hours pass, the uh, base notes start to emerge from the slumber. And you've got oak, moss, amber, uh, honey, and also musk. It just comes through together in like, in the, like a, a classic 1970s masterpiece. And it just produces a finale that's reminiscent of a, a cosy old library filled with leather-bound books and a hint of your grandfather's uh, pipe tobacco. This fragrance is like the Swiss Army Knife of Colognes and it's suitable for a range of occasions from a casual day out to a formal evening event. It's a, a bit more on the mature side so it might uh, suit your more distinguished gentleman who's just experienced a bit of life rather than uh, a teenager that's just starting his fragrance journey. So again if you're uh, a guy who still favours writing letters by hand uh, rather than typing emails or you prefer to shoot photos with a film camera rather than a digital one uh, then this is definitely the scent for you. In terms of performance, this is where Paco Rabanne Poron flexes its muscles. It's got a really strong piercing projection that stays with you like a loyal friend and uh, will be good, for, uh, good to go for uh, at least six to eight hours. The CRG is just right, ensuring that you leave a hint of your presence in a room without overpowering it. And overall, this is just uh, a piece of fragrance history that refuses to be forgotten. Okay, so we're jumping forward now by a decade to 1986 and the new kid on the block was Calvin Klein's obsession EDT for men. This was around the time uh, that my earliest memories of my own fragrance journey began. And I remember smelling this on one of the fold-back pages of a, a, a men's fashion magazine as like maybe a 12 or 13 year old lad. And uh, I absolutely fell in love with how it smelled. So it's possibly the scent that first ignited my passion for perfumery. It's a, a spiced amber fragrance uh, that opens with zesty citruses, cinnamon and coriander. And we've also got some lavender in there. So for the first few minutes, it's a powerful explosion of fresh spiciness that's really clean and welcoming. It's not long before the warmth of the amber and the myrrh starts to come through, as well as a touch of sweetness from the vanilla. But as with most fragrances from the 1980s, this also includes tons of other ingredients, including nutmeg, carnation, Brazilian rosewood, sage and red berries, just to name but a few. But basically the overall aroma that you get with this is a very spicy, ambery scent that bridges the gap between classic and contemporary styles. It does have a slight retro vibe about it, uh, but it's certainly not old fashioned, so I could see a young guy in his 20s still easily being able to pull this one off today. But if, uh, like me, you're a man of a certain age, you'll probably remember this in its heyday, so I'll spray it on and don't be uh, surprised if you feel the sudden urge to solve a Rubik's Cube, stick on some new romantics or play a game of Pac-Man. It's not just uh, a scent, it's uh, a piece of the 80s bottled and ready to unleash your inner Ferris Bueller. Okay, so next up we have Cerute 1881 that came out in 1990. And it's another classic barbershop style fragrance that I think smells more vintage than it does modern. So comparing it straight after the CK Obsession, I'd say that this one smells 10 or 20 years more vintage, even though it was launched four years after the Calvin Klein one. It opens with lots of fresh lavender, cypress and juniper. So it's a crisp and sharp introduction with lots of brightness and sparkle. In the heart, there's floral notes, including rose, uh, ylang ylang and lily of the valley, uh, which adds a soapy shaving gel like accord. So it's a very clean smelling scent that you'd expect to smell on a really well groomed, sharply dressed guy in his 40s. As it settles down, it becomes a touch more woody and earthy with notes of oak, moss, patchouli, cedar and sandalwood, really grounding the fragrance and bringing some long lasting depth. This for me is a very simple and elegant scent that's extremely versatile and easy to wear. However, it, it kind of lacks any sort of uniqueness and character that would set it apart from all the other hundreds of barbershop style uh, fougere fragrances out there. So I would probably go for the uh, Paco Rabanne Pour on one over this, uh, even though it smells really nice and there's absolutely nothing to dislike about it whatsoever. Oh, and the, uh, the bottle design is uh, really nice and quirky and it's uh, probably the nicest bottle in the in today's list. Right, so I've just jumped in my Ford Fiesta XR2 and driven straight to 1992, where phones were still dumb, jeans were baggy, and the stone roses were blasting out of my Alpine car stereo. This is the year we also saw the launch of Safari for Men by Ralph Lauren. It came in a very opulent looking bottle design with a serious and almost regal aesthetic which kind of says I'm not to be worn by anyone under the age of 40. 
but it was actually quite a modern, versatile smelling scent, suitable for men of any age, and was fairly uh, ahead of its time, if, if I'm honest, because uh, in my opinion, this is another one that's re aged really well over time, and uh, you could confidently wear this today without coming off smelling vintage or out of date. It starts out very fresh and vibrant with a strong mix of citrus, eucalyptus, neroli and haldehydes. So you get a nice bright energising opening with a, a sunny outdoorsy freshness. But after a few minutes, a rich blend of spices including cinnamon and coriander, combined with slightly sweeter resinous notes of leather, rose and amber to produce a, a masculine smelling scent with a strong and robust character. It's a fairly lively, spicy aroma with a mild sourness to it, uh, but with enough warmth uh, to make it suitable to wear for a night out or in cooler temperatures. You'll find a subtle mix of sandalwood and vetiver, providing a smooth, woody base layer. And the combination of earthy notes just gives the fragrance uh, a lasting presence. But the performance on this one uh, doesn't seem to be anywhere near as potent as how I remembered it to be back in the day. I always remember it uh, as being a bit of a room filler with a, a very distinctive character and you just knew somebody was wearing it as they passed you by and you just caught a waft of it. However these days brands are governed uh, by what aroma chemicals and ingredients they include in their blends so uh, they simply don't project or last as long as they used to. Uh, but with that said, as soon as I sprayed this again for the first time, after several years, uh, I instantly recognised that iconic safari scent DNA. And it was like looking back at an old photograph or listening to a song uh, from this time period. It instantly transported me back down memory lane and uh, reminded me of places I used to go and people that I've lost contact with. Uh, so I'm really happy to be uh, reunited with an old friend again. Okay, so the last one today is a mere pup in comparison to the others and it came out in 2002, so maybe not quite vintage yet, but certainly retro. This is Givenchy Porom, which is a, a woody spicy fragrance with top notes of mandarin orange, grapefruit and coriander. In the heart, there's vetiver, violet and lavender, and all this sits on a base of cedar and labdanum. It starts out fresh and fruity with some sparkle from the citruses, and also a hit of spiciness from the coriander, whilst the mandarin adds some sweet and fruity juiciness to the opening. But this only lasts for a few minutes, and as it dries down, it starts to reveal its true identity, which is actually more of a powdery floral scent with a fairly dry but soft and gentle character. It's such a well-rounded and sophisticated middle layer that's classy and mature smelling, but the base is where this one truly shines with warm notes of cedar and labdanum, uh, which had a warm, calm and comforting finish. The cedar supplies some mild woodiness whilst the labdan uh, labdanum introduces some leathery touches, and all this combined just makes for a genuinely uh, lovely fragrance and one of the most pleasing aromas that you're ever likely to come across, and it's just simply stunning. But with all that positivity, there's uh, bound to be some kind of negative. And my only criticism that I have with it is that it doesn't project as well as I'd like it to. And for anyone to uh, catch a waft of it, they're going to be need to need to be stood within a couple of feet of you. Even as the wearer, I don't seem to catch many wafts of it in the air. But I can always smell it if I go to it directly to where I've sprayed it. So it's not like I've gone nose blind to it or anything like that. I've also watched loads of different reviews and uh, pretty much everyone else says the same thing. It smells absolutely amazing, but there's just not enough of it. So I suppose it'd work really well uh, in a work or office scent situation. But in my opinion, that wouldn't really do it justice because it's just such a nice fragrance. It's quite frustrating really, uh, but I guess you, you kind of got to take the rough with the smooth, I suppose. Uh, but this is a really great scent though, and one that smells as modern today as it did back in 2002. You'd never guess that this is a 22 year old scent and it's just a testament to the art of fragrance making. It's a scent that combines freshness with depth and sophistication and with a, a bit of approachability. It's ideal for the uh, modern man who appreciates a fragrance that's both refined and uh, full of character and that's why it remains a, a relevant and appealing choice for men of all ages even to this day, uh, literally two decades after its launch. Okay, so in summary, I would say that out of these six today, the three that I'd be most likely to reach for are the Calvin Klein Obsession, the uh, Safari, and also the Givenchy. The other three are just a little bit too vintage for my own personal taste, but still great options if you're into your fresh barbershop fougeres. 
I know some of you out there might be quite new to fragrances and will probably wonder why a scent can be linked to a particular era and can be classed as modern or old fashioned. But just like with music or fashion, uh, there's definite trends that fragrance brands follow and it definitely puts a, an indelible date stamp on them in the same way that you can recognise a rock and roll song being associated with uh, the 1950s or you can connect a grime track to the noughties if that makes sense. But anyway, it's been a lot of fun revisiting these uh, sleeping giants today. And if you've got any fragrances that you might have sat in your collection that you haven't worn for a while, uh, or there's one uh, that you may not have worn for a few years, then make sure to dig them out and see what personal memories they conjure up for you. You might be, uh, you might be surprised what memories they, 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 they bring back once you've sprayed them. So once again, that's about it for me today. And if you've made it to this part of the episode, you're an absolute legend and you're the reason why I make these videos in the first place. So stay safe, keep smelling fresh and I'll see you very soon for another one. Bye bye for now.